Hey y'all, so in this video, I'm going to be using this three-quarter inch scrap wood, uh, all varying sizes, to make a nice rustic flag. Um, it's not going to be a crazy style, just a standard rustic red, white, and blue flag. So I should have started at the miter, but I decided to go right to the table saw and cut each piece to 11 16th inch. So to start off, I'm going to need seven pieces that are about 11 inches long. And then we're going to move and cut uh, six pieces at 18 inches long. And that's going to give me the stripes for the flag. And this is a great project for when you have all that extra scrap wood. Uh, it's all two smaller varying sizes, but you still want to uh, push some product and uh, make some money. So this thickness of 11 16th inch should give us roughly a 9.5 inch by 18 inch flag. So I took all the pieces over to the miter and started cutting the lengths. Um, again, the long stripes are going to be uh, 18 inches long and then the short stripes are going to be 11 inches long. It probably would have been easier to cut them all to the right size prior to bringing them to the table saw, but I was kind of rushing the project, so I uh, did it backwards. So to add a little character to the flags, I removed the square edge on the front of the stripes and just add a little bit of a round over on it. This isn't something that needs to be done, but I really like the way that it turns out with the round over. So once I have all the stripes rounded over, I uh, line them all up, make sure they're nice and uh, flush with each other, and then I'll take the bigger piece of wood, slide it in the place where the union goes, make two marks on the top and the side where the stripes meet the union, and then I'll cut my union size based off those marks. And make sure to clamp the stripes up when taking this measurement. Um, that way when you glue it up and you have the stripes clamped, the union doesn't turn out to be smaller uh, than it, what's, what it's supposed to be. So just like the stripes, I take the union over to the router table and put a round over on each edge so that it has the same style as the stripes are. So you don't have to do this part of the process, but what I like to do is separate the stripes to the ones which I will be staining uh, versus the ones I'll be burning. Um, and this just helps uh, hide any imperfections in the wood. So for the red stripes, I like to use Minwax Barn Red, which I think gives a nice rustic tone uh, for the red color. And for the Union, I use the Minwax uh, Navy Blue. What's great about using the scrap wood for a small project like this is that you're not wasting wood um, and you're not spending extra money on wood to create something small uh, that you can use uh, just the littlest bit of scrap wood for, and you could still turn around and sell something like this um, at a fair or maybe even online if you have an Etsy shop, something like that. In the few fairs that I'm a vendor at throughout the year, I'll just buy a, uh, a bunch of wood to create large flags or other products, and then any of the scrap wood I have, I'll turn into these mini flags. And I usually sell them around $40 to $50, depending on the star engraving style that I make. For this flag in particular, we're going to be doing the painted stars, which I'll usually price around $40. Um, for an engraved, you know, it goes up to $75, depending on the engraving. So to help make the rustic style of this flag, I'll use my burner and just heat hit each stripe, uh, really bring out the wood grain and add a little burn to it. Uh, you don't have to do this. You could paint the stripes white, which is another popular uh, seller or you can just leave them clean in the wood tone. Uh, people tend to love, love that a lot, especially at the fairs. Okay. 
It really depends on what style you like with how heavy of a burn you do. I personally like a medium burn, but this stripe here, I went a little too heavy on it, and uh, I just took a little bit of sandpaper to it to help lighten it up. Uh, it was a really easy fix. But just be mindful that the longer the flame stays on the wood, the darker it's going to be. So once everything is stained and burned, I take the stripes and organize them to where I think they'll look best uh, sitting beside each other. So instead of engraving this mini flag, I'm going to be using this flat white spray paint with a star stencil that I got off um, uh, Amazon. It's a super quick way to continue with your project without having to set up the uh, CNC or sit down with a Dremel and engrave every star by hand, especially if you're trying to batch out um, flags for a fair coming up or something like that. So for the larger flags, I like to do a full flag glue up, which means to put glue on every stripe and clamp them down for about 24 hours. Um, but for these mini flags, I just like to put um, braces on the back with a little wood glue and some nails. So here I just flipped the stripes and union over and I used some scrap wood to make sure all the stripes are level with each other. And then I just take some clamps and tighten them all up. Using the rest of my scrap wood, I just use about a half inch to three quarter inch piece uh, on the back and I measure how long it's supposed to be on the back of the flag. Cut them on the miter saw and then I add some wood glue to the tops of them and then I end up flipping them over onto the stripes in the union and then using a brad nailer to uh, tighten them down. So here I'm just using my Ryobi uh, 18 gauge brad nailer with 5 8 inch uh, brad nails. This will give me plenty of length of nail to get through the braces and into the stripes and union without going through the front of the flag. If you're planning to try this and don't have a brand nailer, you can always just put wood glue on the braces, turn them over, and then put something heavy like a couple books or something on the back of it and let it sit for about 24 hours. And here it is, a little scrap wood mini flag. Now you don't have to stop here. Um, I'm actually going to add a frame around it, which I found to be one of the most popular sellers, especially at the fairs. Um, most people actually ended up buying the framed mini flags as compared to the unframed uh, large or medium flags. So I started by cutting the uh, side frames down to the exact width of the flag and then using two more longer pieces of scrap to... Um, get the top and bottom of the flag and they they actually need to be about an inch and a half longer to make up for the side frames and this will turn your flag into more of a 19 and a half inch uh, sized flag so i personally like how a flag is recessed into a frame so to do this i just use a little piece of a quarter inch scrap wood set it on the table and then put the frame uh, frame wood on top of that to give it that raised um, frame look. And to attach the frame, I'm just using my 16 gauge brad nailer with uh, an inch and a quarter in the brad nails. And here's the final product, a scrap wood mini flag in a rustic frame. Hey 
Hey, if you like this video, go and hit that like button for me. And if you want to see more like it in the future, hit subscribe.